the Pride and Prejudice project started it in uh, 2015. It was uh, very kindly funded by the Esme Fairbairn Collections Fund. So it was a great opportunity for us to, to really build upon existing LGBT work that we've done within the Museum of Liverpool and also the art galleries within the organisation. So we really wanted to find out what hidden objects and stories there might be in uh, our existing collections to really help represent people's stories that have never been told before. I think it, it's been a, a great opportunity for, for us to meet local individuals and organisations and community groups, um, go out to them, find out their opinions, um, and it's building that trust. Obviously these don't, things don't happen overnight. It, it is a, a long kind of term building trust experience. And now that we've built those relationships, it's great legacies for other projects, um, for them to be involved in lots of different things, give us feedback about what we should be collecting for the museum in the future, for example, to represent the LD LGBT communities. The Walker Art Gallery hosted the groundbreaking exhibition Coming Out. 36 events took place over the course of the exhibition, delivered in partnership with a variety of community groups and key stakeholders in the city. But really this exhibition built on 10 years of work at the gallery, which were all aimed at making LGBT plus history and communities and lives more visible permanently. With the, the Tales from the City exhibition, that research from the Pride and Prejudice project was absolutely instrumental in developing this exhibition. Seeing the personal stories, bringing the objects out store that would never have been on display without that extra information and of course seeing people people represented in the museum. This work is not simply something bolted on and added on for a temporary period. It will be something we continue to do. We've grown the number of visitors to the gallery but also diversified those audiences. We've introduced the Pride and Prejudice Ident, which visitors can spot around the gallery attached to labels indicating where there's an LGBT plus history relevant to that object. Sometimes the logo might appear next to an artwork to suggest to people visit the webpage where they can find out more about the LGBT plus history of that object. We've also been publishing our amazing research online so that people unable to visit us here in Liverpool have access to that research too. And of course having the online resource, um, it's great for example for, for schools. Um, LGBT history isn't in the national curriculum now and of course in the past with things like section 28 people weren't necessarily told anything about LGBT people, their contribution to the development of the city so having that resource online really helps people to understand um, their own history but also to kind of um, educate out prejudice and hate crime too. So really one of the, the best things for me from the project was finding some fantastic objects in the collection and also that opportunity to reinterpret objects, um, things that you know have been in store since we acquired it decades ago. So it's just a fantastic opportunity to see those objects now on display with fantastic stories associated with them and to see people engaging with those objects and knowing that it's part of their history and their story. We're putting visitors at the forefront. We're prepared to make new strides, take new steps, open new doors to see these wonderful collections in a different but much more relevant way. Mm -hmm.